boat designs evolve through time. Sometimes they take a tiny little step forward, other times they take a giant leap. This boat, Bayliner's new VR5, this is a good example of a big leap forward. The best way to see this evolution in action, take a look at the 185. This is the VR5's predecessor. We've jumped onto a different VR5 to show you what one looks like without the tower on it. And, lucky stroke, we got Mike here from Bayliner to tell us, Mike, what are you most proud of about this new model? The space, it's huge. Actually, our old 185 BR fits inside of this boat. <laughs> and the beautiful thing too is, without decontenting, without taking any of the accoutrements out of the boat, uh, we've actually been able to maintain, if not drop, price at MSRP. Awesome. You can see Bayliner brought the beam of the boat all the way forward. Gives you a lot more room up here. The 185 had a beam of 7.7. The VR5 has a beam of 8 foot even. So even as you move aft, there's still more elbow room in the boat, still more width and more space to work with. As we move aft here, there's some much more dramatic forms of evolution that are evident. Take a look in this ski locker, for example. Yes, sure, the hatch raises on a gas assist strut, that's great, but when you look down here, you notice a nice gel-coated surface. That wasn't the case on the boat's predecessor, but now Bayliner uses an all-fiberglass stringer grid system, and this is all very nicely finished inside. This tower is another great example of evolution. It was designed by Bayliner and Monster together, and it is plenty strong. For a tower you're gonna find on an 18-foot boat, you bet. Now, it also, has quick disconnects, hidden right back here. So instead of a whole rigmarole where you have to fold back a bunch of struts, you just pop these off, fold it back, and the whole thing fits into a boot. Here at the helm, we've got a pretty slick layout. You have lighted rocker switches, your gauge clusters right in front of the wheel in the center. I like that. The only thing here is I wish there was somewhere to put your truck plotter. There's really nowhere to add any electronics. Running the VR5 is just plain fun. At 4,000 RPM, we tore up the lake at 35.6 miles an hour, and we were getting 3.7 miles to the gallon while we did it. Handling is great, and this hull eats up the waves. For a 20-foot bay liner, I'm telling you, this is one of the best boats they've made yet. I like how this passenger side seat is pretty tricked out, too. You can sit normal, you can put it in the middle and sit facing aft or swing it all the way down, turn the whole thing into a lounge. You say that one lounge just isn't enough? Hey, look, this is an 18-foot running surface. How much do you think you can get on that? Two full lounges? Well, yeah. It's another really interesting little design that Bayliner did here. This folds up. This folds down. Voila! You got another lounge. Ah, ooh, I like this one. Now, this is comfortable and all, and, you know, luxury is great, but one of the really important ways you see this boat evolve, come look down here. See this cockpit drain? And there's another one right here. The VR5 is a self-bailing boat. The 185 was not. Under the seat here, we've got a cooler. But folks, let me leave you with one final thing. Perhaps the most impressive way that this boat has evolved from the 185 it actually costs about $700 less. Yes, that's right. The newer model, with all of these vastly improved features, costs less than the one it replaces. You gotta like that. Man.